bicycle combination locks. We all trust these to lock our expensive electric bike and electric scooters. But how safe are they? Can you really unlock this without knowing the key? And in this video, I'm going to try and unlock these three bicycle combination locks using three different methods without knowing the combination keys. How hard is it? Let's find out. Before I show you my three methods to unlock all of these three bicycle combination locks, we need to understand how these work. So let me first explain to you how this works. There are four digits on this lock in which you have to line them up correctly in order for you to open this lock. Every digit is located on a ring in which you can spin and then on each ring there are a total of 10 different digits to choose from. We got four rings here and therefore there are a total of 9,999 different combinations for you to choose from in which only one of them is correct. So I've got three locks here and they operate differently. These two, you have to line up the key and then you pull and it will come out like this. This one here, you have to line up the keys. Once it's right, you push this and you unlock. So the way they operate is different, but the principle is all the same. So let's talk about this one here, which is very similar to this and this. You got four letters to choose from. Each letter is on a ring in which you can spin around. Now let's take a look at the keyhole. You can see all the way through at the end. And that's because we got the right combination key. I'm going to spin the first ring around. You can see that metal sticking out. Okay, Out of the 10 possible letters on this ring, only one letter that allows that metal to disappear. See that? And that's the part on that ring that has that metal cut out just like this washer here I have. So let's assume this washer is the first ring on this lock and this is where it should be right now. So when you spin the first ring around okay, out of the 10 position only this position here would allow you to unlock the lock. And the same principle applies to the other three rings. So once all four rings line up with all the slots line up right here, then you can pull the key out. And let me show you what happens inside the lock for the first ring. So you spin the ring around, okay, inside the slot right here. So no matter how you pull, it still got stuck by the ring. But if you spin to the right key, right at the slot here, and it will allow you to slide out freely because of the cut slot right here. And that's for the first ring. And you have to line up the other three slots on the key with the other three rings. And once they all line up, you can freely pull the key out because it will just slide out just like that. And here is the most important part of this kind of combination locks. This ring here, when you spin it around, it has to be able to move a little bit freely. You can see that? There should be a little gap between this ring and the slot that's cut on the key. Okay, if this ring is too thick, it will slide in here very hard and if it's thick enough, it will get stuck in here and can't spin anymore. And that will make this lock useless. And this is what we call tolerance in engineering. So this gap here, not much, I would say about 0.1 millimeter that it has to have in order for this ring to be able to spin freely without getting stuck. And this is where we can exploit this engineering tolerance to our advantage. 
I'm gonna try and open this one first. On the right side, we got the key. On the left side, we got the lock. So now the key is in the lock and it's locked up. It's gonna work like this. On the left side, we got the lock. Key on the right side and they will come together like this okay this is when they're locked you can slide them because it's locked once you got the right key they will come apart like this and then you can slide them easily and then you can pull it out i'm going to try and spin the last ring first and when i pull it this way everything will go because of the tolerance when I spin the ring up to a point where there is a slot, okay, and it won't lock up here anymore. So this part here on that ring will be free. And therefore, when I pull, the last ring won't move, but only the three, the first three ring will move. So it will be like this. The last ring will stay stationary. And then we'll do the same thing for this. And then when it's free, when I pull, only this two will move. This one won't move anymore because of the slot. It doesn't push this this way anymore. Same here, it doesn't push this way anymore. It only push this one and this one. And therefore, when I pull, only this two will move. Now let's try it on the real thing here. I'm going to try and pull this apart. Okay. And let's just pay attention to the first ring from the left okay that's the letter s on here so when i pull this okay if that's not the right key it's going to pull all four letters toward the right side and there shouldn't be a gap between letter s and letter l because every single letter moves now if i try the next letter letter p and try to pull it okay they all move and there's no gap between letter p and letter l okay try the next one h now when i pull letter h you can see there's a gap between H and L. Okay, see that? That means letter H does not move, whereas the other three letters move. See that? Let's try the next one. M. Now this one does not produce a gap between M and L. Okay. That means everything moves. Let's try next letter. Letter T. Okay. There's no gap between T and L. Okay. Everything moves. Same for letter W. Okay. It doesn't create a gap between W and L. Alright. So I have gone all the way around on the first ring and only letter H would produce a gap between H and L when I try to pull this apart. See that? Now let's try on the next ring and this time we're going to pay attention to the gap between letter L and letter A. Nothing is happening here so I'm going to move to the next letter. Nothing happening here next letter nothing 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 now you can see a gap so with letter I when I pull you see how it moves from letter A and letter D. Now right here is when we see the gap between I and E. You see clearly there's a gap between I and E. 
Now we're going to try the third ring right here. That's letter A on here. So when I pull, we're going to have to look for a gap between the third ring and the last ring. There's no gap now. Let's keep going. Nope. 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 You see that? See how letter D moves, but letter S does not move. And there's a gap between S and D. Okay, so the first three rings don't move, whereas the last ring moves. Now let's try the last letter. Last letter is easy. You only have 10 more choices to choose from. So let's just try one by one. Nothing here on D. There we go. Comes out. Now this pulling method is very tiring. And also the tolerance on this lock is pretty high. And therefore the gap between each letter is tiny. I have to pull pretty hard for me to see the gap between the letters. For my second lock, I'm going to try a different method and this one is a lot easier and doesn't require a lot of pulling. And for this lock, the gap between the letters is a little bit bigger and therefore it's easier to work on. And therefore, I can just use my fingernail and just push it away like this and you can see the gap between letter M and O between the first ring and the second ring that's a big gap right there for letter S see that the gap is smaller for letter S letter D also smaller letter R smaller letter H smaller let me go back to letter M you see that? That's a big difference. Let's try letter P. The gap is small. Letter M. You see that? So this definitely letter M on the first ring on the left here. Now let's try the second ring. So I'm just gonna use my fingernail and push it toward the left and see the gap between letter H and A in this case okay, and compare, just compare the gap between the letters okay, that's not much that's not much you see that? that's different that's a bigger gap on letter O right there See, letter I is not the same at all. I can barely move. Back to letter O. That is a big gap. Go back to letter L. You see that? Smaller gap. So, let's try letter A. Same thing. Small gap. Letter O. I can move freely with a big gap. So definitely O on here. Next one. Small gap. This one can't even move. Nope. Mm -mm. Nope. 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 There we go. You see how big of a gap that is. That's a huge difference. Go back to K. I can't move. I can't even move letter K. But O, that's a big gap. Now let's try the last digit here. Okay. Not much. That's a big gap right there. See? Try letter A. Mm -mm, it's not moving. Letter N. That's a big gap. 
D, strike T, nope, E, not even moving, P, not even moving, so let's go back to N, that is a big gap, and what happens if we pull this, there we go, for my last bike lock, I'm going to have to try a different method because it operates differently compared to the other two bike locks that I have. For this one, it has a button right here and to unlock it, you need to put in the right key combination and then you push this button. If the key is right, this button will go all the way in and not just a little bit like this. On this lock, because I have to push in this button to unlock it, I'm going to have to try the first ring on the right first. And there is also a gap between the rings. So I'm going to use my knife and separate between the ring. So I'm just going to put it in here between the cracks and make a gap like that. And then I'm going to push it in. And you if it's not the right number, you will see it will push this number in. See that? So that's not the right number. Number four. Number three. Do the same thing. Take my knife and make a gap and push it in. It still moves. So that's not the right number. Let's try number two. The key here is that you hold your knife lightly, not too hard, so that when you push it in, you can feel it move, both your knife and then the gap too. So it's moving my knife and the gap is getting smaller, so that is not number two. So it looks like, I believe, number one. Okay. The gap is not getting smaller, my knife is not moving. Okay, as opposed to, let's try number zero. It's pushing in both my knife and the gap. So it's definitely number one on the first ring. Now let's work on the second ring. I'm going to put my knife, make a gap between second ring and the third ring. Push it in. I can feel it pushing in, so that's not number two. It's pushing in, so that's not number one. Now this one is not moving. It doesn't move my knife. It doesn't move the gap. It doesn't make the gap smaller. It's definitely number zero on the second ring. Let's try a different number here. You see it's pushing in like that. So that's not number 9, so it is definitely number 0 on the second ring. It's not moving my knife, it doesn't make the gap smaller. Let's try the third ring. Put my knife in the gap between the third ring and the fourth ring. And then I push. Okay, it's moving my knife. So it's not Number one, there, it's moving, so it's not number zero. Now that is not moving, I can feel it, it's stay in one place. So definitely, probably number nine, number eight, yeah. I can feel it pushing in. The gap is getting smaller. You see that? So that's not number eight. Not number seven either. I can feel it pushing in. Nope. I can really feel the difference. So number nine, let's try again. Yep. Nothing on number nine. Try again on number zero. Yep. See that? Very subtle, but you can see it pushing in. Whereas number nine, 
nope nothing happens it's not pushing it all right let's try on the last ring yep it's pushing in on number five number four there we go now this button can go all the way in, so it's unlocked now we can try to lock it okay 4901 if we push this it will unlock so that's the right key combination so there you have it it's very easy and you can easily unlock these locks in just a few minutes without knowing the key combination and I know some of you are gonna say the bike thieves are gonna see this video and they're gonna go out and steal all of the bikes out there well no thieves don't spend a few minutes trying to fiddle around with these locks and waste their time trying to unlock these locks they have this and all it takes is less than 10 seconds to cut away any of these locks with an angle grinder like this or even a bolt cutter they can walk away with your bike in less than 10 seconds I would say it only takes about 5 seconds to cut any of these locks the only one advice I can give you is not to trust any of these locks or any locks at all the more expensive your bike is the faster it will be stolen it doesn't matter how many of these locks you have or how secure your lock is one of these tools will make your bike disappear in just a few seconds be safe don't get robbed and I will see you next time